<clears throat> hey, Cody, thanks for uh, taking some time to talk to uh, current students and potential students. Um, you know, Cody is a ranking graduate from 2022. So I'm really excited to talk to you and uh, ask you some questions because you are the most recent graduate, you know, graduating class and you're out in the workforce. So uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, thanks for having me, Mr. G. I really, uh, I really enjoy doing uh, interviews like this. They're kind of fun, so yeah, I'm yeah. excited. Cool. So, uh, um, where where'd you wind up after Rankin? Oh, well, I am currently working still in the St. Louis area um, for a company called GDS. Um, I worked there as an intern um, while I was going to school, and um, once I had graduated, they offered me a full time position as a junior software developer. So that was the first job that I landed outside of Brandon. So you started as an intern. What semester, just out of curiosity, did you start the internship with? So it was the tail end of my third semester. So the bulk of my internship was during my fourth semester. Okay, cool. And now, now you're full time at GDS. And are they located in St. Louis, I'm assuming? Yes, so they are out of the uh, Webster Groves area. Um, they have an office there. A lot of the, um, a lot of my fellow employees, we all work um, hybrid schedules, which means that we work part of our time from home and then we commute for the other part during the week. Okay, about yeah, how many days at home versus in the office? So um, they're they're it's kind of um, that's up to the employee. They kind of let you base it on your needs and your schedule. Um, for me, I uh, currently work three days from home, uh, two in the office. Okay. And, obvi and obviously, they've been really flexible, too. Um, I currently am expecting my third child, so they've been really understanding and kind of flexible for doctor's visits and stuff like that. So that's been really Congratulations. Nice. I, yeah, didn't, I don't yeah. think I had this updated news. Yep, yep. She, uh, I think uh, any, any day now, she just hit, I think, 38 weeks, so... Nice. So we'll be uh, welcoming our third child into the world, so I'm very excited. Awesome. Congratulations. Hey, uh, also want to compliment you on the setup here. Very cool, you know, backdrop you got. I see the Rankin Diploma kind of in the background <laughs> with some figurines. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm a big, like, tech nerd, and, you know, I love anime, all that stuff. So, you know, I kind of like decorating my home office with things that I think uh, represent who I am as a person and some of my accomplishments. So... If you kind of like, if you could see the rest of my room, it's more of the same, just decked out with things that, you know, fit me as a person. Does the the webcam, does it detach and you can do a pan of the room or is this not a thing we can uh, do? Uh, I don't think I, it, it would kind of, I'd be, it'd be a little rough because it's all wired into my computer right no now. No problem, no problem. That's all good. <laughs> so, uh, so you, you know, you graduated from Rankin, application and web development was your major. And so you learned a bunch of coding languages. And so are you using any of those? Uh, yes. Um, so I guess the the job that I do particularly, there's two sides of it. There is the administration side of it, which is I'm handling, you know, tickets and um, any issues that may arise for our customers within their NetSuite software, which is um, for those who don't know, um, NetSuite is a form of SaaS, a software as a service that we help manage and develop within for our customers. Um, and so there's that side of my job. And then the other side is the development side where companies will want customizations or NetSuite to do things that it doesn't do out of the box. And then they hire us to develop some of that functionality and customization for them. And so what languages uh, does that involve? So I particularly work with JavaScript, that is the um, main language, but you can also use, I believe, C Sharp. Um, I think just kind of most people develop with JavaScript. Um, now, we do have a mobile app that my company develops for our field service that we sell. It's kind of a add-on to NetSuite, um, and that we develop in React uh, Native, which nice. I don't do too much on that side of things yet, um, but there has been kind of talk to potentially down the road move me to more of the mobile side to kind of assist with some of the senior developers and the uh, mobile app space. So. And and you did study JavaScript and React while you were <laughs> a student, so you, you seem like uh, that, that might be a good fit. Yeah, no, I definitely think um, kind of what I've learned at Rankin was it definitely gave me the footing for what I needed to 
learn next once I moved to the professional setting? Because obviously, you know, in the tech space, you you continue to grow your knowledge and learn. And so I think having a strong core foundation um, within, you know, JavaScript, C Sharp, and all those languages um, will really set you up nicely for continuing that education and continuing learning nice. as you move forward in your professional career. Yeah, yeah, never-ending learning, right? The f <laughs> there's one one rule of, of development, right? One The golden rule, you're never done learning. Right, So right. That's cool. Um, you know, you, you came to Rankin and you chose this development track and and uh, why? I mean, what what interests you about this space or how'd you wind up picking it? Yeah, so um, I think my path was maybe a little different than some students. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit older than I would think maybe most of the students coming into Rankin. How old um, are you? So, so I am tw I'm about to, I'm a couple of weeks from turning 28. I'll be 28 this year. Okay. So you and were mid twenties so, uh, coming through Rankin. Yes. So I was mid twenties with uh, two children coming into Rankin. So it was it was kind of scary. It was a big leap for me um, to start the beginning of my journey with Rankin. Um, but I think what was kind of the deciding factors for me was I was working in a career that I wasn't the most satisfied in. I wasn't very happy with what I was doing. Um, I've always kind of had a passion for technology, computers, and things of that nature. And so um, kind of when COVID had struck, um, I kind of had decided that, you know, I wanted a major change and this might be, you know, maybe the kick in the pants I needed to, you know, start that change. And so I started looking into different schools that um, had offered programs like this because I knew a four year degree probably wasn't in the cards for me, just given the situation that I was in, you know, children and, um, mortgages, car payments, all that stuff. Um, so I knew I needed to get something where I could go in quickly and get out just as quickly so that way I could get right back to working and making money for myself and my family. Yeah. Um, so um, I enrolled, um, I came to Rankin, and that's kind of how it all started was, you know, I think an unhappiness with the way that my life was going and the direction that it was heading, I think, you know, was probably the biggest factor for me. So COVID kind of hit and you wanted, uh, it was it was in just like, hey, I'm, I'm ready to try something different. Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you kind of talked about the different sides of the job. I mean, is there anything that uh, you worked on in your job that, that you really enjoyed, uh, like a project that stands out or, you know, sometimes, I mean, um, things can just be you know you're just building business software and and that's one thing but sometimes you can work on and it doesn't have to be part of the job either have you worked on side projects or anything that uh just kind of cool kind of different um yeah so i i think it's um it's a little bit different because a lot of the stuff i work on is very like particular to certain customers i think like the big moment for me where i got really excited was when i started handling my own customers um, and had my own clients. Yeah. Um, so in, in a typical work week, you know, I'll have a few different projects that I'll be working on for clients that are specifically assigned to me. The, you know, the clients I meet with on a weekly basis to discuss updates, to discuss any future changes that they'd like. Um, and so I think that was kind of like the big excitement with the career was, you know, it's like, oh, I get my own clients. Like these are people that I'm specifically developing for and fixing their issues. And so I think, you know, maybe there isn't like one particular project that was it for me. I think it was when I got the responsibility of having my own clients. Yeah, that's yeah, a great way to answer that question. It's a, it's a great answer. Um, so what's a day in your uh, work life like? I mean, what time do you clock in? What time do you clock out? What's, how much, what do you do? So um, I usually start my day at nine. I work uh, from nine to five. Um, now, sometimes there might be some variations in that. But we do have a few customers who are overseas. So the um, so their time zones are a little bit different. So there are some occasions where I might start later just because those meetings we might have pretty late into the evening. Um, but typically my days are from nine to five. And I'll start out usually um, by just kind of jumping in to 
whatever projects I have um, laid out for the week. Um, usually I kind of know what I'm supposed to be working on because I work pretty closely with a lot of our project managers um, who kind of keep everything in different Excel sheets for different projects that we have going at any given time. So I'll jump on those until about noon. Um, around noon, we usually have our daily scrum calls where we kind of talk about status that we're making, any issues that we might have, um, and you know, seek assistance from any of the other developers who may have you know some insight on you know any issues that you may arise. Um, and I will say that's one thing I really did like about GDS. Um, it's a very friendly environment. The developers are very apt to. Get, share their knowledge and help with any issues that you know you may run into. Um, and so that was like you know when I was looking for jobs, I had you know multiple jobs lined up. But one of the deciding factors for why I ended up where I'm at was I you know they were very big on making sure I was growing as a developer, and that was really important to me for my first job because you know your first you know your first years of work are you know you're going to be absorbing a lot of knowledge have people willing to teach you, it's, it's very easy to keep learning and you know absorb that knowledge. Um, but so I'll have those scrum calls, um, you know, I'll have any questions answered at that time. Um, and then I'll go back to kind of developing. Um, and then usually in the afternoon, I usually have my meetings with uh, customers or clients. And so we'll do those meetings which will last for about an hour. And then from there, if I still have any remaining time of the day, Kind of finish up with you know any tickets or projects that I'm working on. So if you had to try and guess the breakdown of how much time you spend in development versus all the other stuff, meetings and and discussions and emails, what would be the percentage? Um, so I think throughout the week, um, probably twenty five to thirty percent of my time is in meetings for the whole week. Um, you know, Tuesdays and third or no, Wednesdays and I think Fridays are my most heavy days with meetings. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, a big chunk of my time is actually working on tickets, tasks, um, whatever, you know, is on my to-do list of jobs that need to be carried out for the week. So roughly 25% versus 75% uh, in development. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Um, so you just graduated, you know, I remember having you as a student and you always were, you know, uh, a great student, frankly. And so, you know, you graduated presumably with some, some, you know, uh, good grades. And so my question is what, what advice would you give to current or future students to be successful at Rankin? Yeah, um, of course. So, you know, this is probably, you know, the most important part of this whole interview because this is what's going to matter to, you know, the people looking to either join Rankin or looking to go get a job. Um, so my advice would be never be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, you know, part of the interview process is learning from each interview and, you know, taking that to do the next interview, you know, even better than the one before. Um, and so, you know, taking those chances, you know, jumping at every opportunity, you know, even if it doesn't pan out, there's something to be learned from each and every one of those. And I think that is probably the best advice I could give, you know, anyone looking to, you know, join this profession or, you know, find a, you know, a job out in the, out in the world. Cool. Good, good tip. Good tip. And, uh, you know, thinking about Rankin's curriculum, you know, you kind of touched on this. It sounded like the JavaScript has worked out well for you, you know, so what worked well about our curriculum? Like, was there anything in particular that was like, hey, I use this every day? And then what didn't work out well? In other words, hey, I learned this at Rankin and I personally haven't touched it. Yeah, um, so I think the JavaScript would obviously be probably the thing that I use the most, um, but I try to stay up on all of the languages that we've learned, you know, with the C Sharp, um, the React, because, you know, I, I you never know what the future is going to hold. And so that being said, you know, I don't know in six months, like if I'm still going to be using JavaScript, you know, because anything can happen. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I might have to move or, you know, the economy can take a downturn. And so I think keeping yourself prepared for those situations is the important thing. So even if like I may not be currently using it in my, my current job, 
I am definitely keeping up with a lot of the skills that I've learned from Rankin, even if they don't necessarily pertain to what I'm currently doing. Got it. Got it. Um, you know, kind of coming into Rankin, you were telling, you know, you wanted to change in direction and, and you know, what your career was. Um, you know, you, you, you probably had some sort of expectations about, you know, salary and, and um, you know, um, you know, I'm not going to ask you your, your salary, but I guess from what you've seen from your classmates, you know, if you could provide, if you could set expectations of a potential student like around salary what would be a reasonable kind of expectation to have yeah um you know i think it all depends on you know how hungry you are if that makes sense because obviously you know if you take a ton of interviews you know and you're constantly putting yourself out there you have things to show to these potential employers you know that just raises your potential earnings um you know by so much because you know if you take one interview like that's your only offer but you know if you're taking multiple interviews um and you're constantly trying to find opportunities you know you set yourself up to in my opinion you know i've seen on the low end um you know 40 to 45 and the high end you know anywhere from 60 you know and it, it all depends on the person because you know it depends what you you know what you're looking for if you're looking for a lot of responsibility make a lot of money and those are the jobs that you're interviewing for you know that is probably what you're going to be able to find. Um, you know, if you're looking for a smaller company where you can learn and grow, you might make a little less money, but you know, you might get a lot more opportunity to grow. Um, and so I definitely think, you know, there's money to be made in this industry. I think, you know, it, it comes down to how much work you're willing to put in because getting the diploma and the degree, that's, that's only step one. You know, there's, steps after that you need to follow through on if you really want to land that dream job and be making the money that you want to make after ranking and you yeah know, it, it, like like i said you know it all comes down to how much work you're willing to put in and how hungry you are to prove that you're someone that these companies should hire so uh one of your by the way your this interview was uh, by request some current students say oh we got to interview cody <laughs> you know so they they kind of name dropped you and uh um, we as a class were one day watching your, one of your projects on, on YouTube. You, you made a YouTube video and, um, the bug tracker, if you remember that, I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so now we have, you know, students again doing the bug tracker. And, uh, so my question is, you know, it, it, when we start that project, you might remember there was a YouTube video that was like, this is why this is the perfect project. You remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so in that video, they're like, look, you do this project, you know, build the portfolio and then use that in the interview. So my question is, were you able to use any projects, any portfolio projects during any of your interviews? Yeah. Um, so um, actually, I did have some employees because like when I was sending out my uh, my portfolio, I had um, also attached some of the videos that I had done for school. And so some of them had actually given feedback on the project. And so it, it was definitely, um, you know, having things to attach my name to it was definitely helpful um, because then, you know, I'm taking it from, you know, just giving them my word on things to them seeing something physical that I have created and built with my time at Rankin. And so I definitely think the projects and having the videos were a huge help and um, definitely gave me, I think, a leg up. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you're, I mean, you're going to be competing with all sorts of people. But at the end of the day, what, what you know, what employers really want to know is that you can do what you say you can do. That's why a lot of employers will have, you know, you know, tests or, you know, just like, um, you know, small problems for you to solve for the interview process. And, you know, I think the having a project that you can show them that you built is just, you know, it just gives you that big of a leg up versus everyone else that's also looking to try to land that job. Yeah, awesome, very cool. So, uh, you know, just wanna say congratulations again. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm super happy for you. Uh, you know, you found your way into a good job and a good industry and, uh, you know, you've launched a career and, uh, you know, that's, that's awesome. And just, you know, just wanna say congrats.
Yeah, you know, I'd like to also, you know, thank you and all the Rankin staff, you know, because there was definitely times, um, you know, where school is hard, you know, especially, you know, with my situation. There was times where, like, you just want to give up, you want to quit. And, you know, if anyone else is going through that, all I can say is stick it out, keep working hard. You know, if if you need assistance, you know, the, the Rankin staff is some of the best staff that I've ever dealt with. And, you know, I can speak personally, Mr. G has definitely helped me when I was in some low points getting through the program, you know. And so, you know, work hard. You guys can make it. It's uh, It'll pay off in the end, you know, and. Uh, yeah, I couldn't be more thankful to Rankin and everything they've done for me. Hey, you, you earned it, man. Congratulations. And and thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, congrats. All right, man. Uh, well, let me... I don't have a sign-off. Do you have a sign-off? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and end it. All right, thanks. I mean, I could add a... Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow, you know, hey, follow the, the, for the video. <laughs> Maybe leave a comment down below. <laughs> <laughs>